We invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know what that's from? Too. That's good, brother. That's brother Gary. As from Bible school, that means sit down and be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you need to stay up there today, then, all right? No, I go like that? Okay. All right. It's good to see this uh, uh, wonderful number out this morning. We just thank and praise God for uh, uh, such a beautiful day, and we just uh, thank God for your presence here this morning. We make just a couple of announcements this morning. Uh, our couples banquet will be this coming Saturday at, uh, at 6 p.m., and uh, wear your best Western outfit. And uh, we'll have a wonderful time. Uh, we'll eat. Uh, and we'll eat. And we'll have fun, all right? And uh, we'll have a special, uh, special uh, speakers with us. And you won't want to miss uh, next Saturday evening at 6 o'clock. If you've not signed up, please do that uh, down in the uh, uh, vestibule down here. And also, uh, uh, don't forget about the Scripture Memory Challenge. And uh, uh, please try to remember to uh, study your scripture and uh, memorize the, the scripture uh, each week. And this week it's in the bulletin. It's in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And uh, so I challenge you to do that. And, uh, and we just thank and praise God for what he's doing here at First Baptist. And uh, thank and praise God for what he's going to do. I'm, I'm expecting great things, aren't you? Yes. Uh, if we don't expect nothing, don't expect anything, all right? And so I'm expecting, aren't you? And uh, let's go ahead and go to God in prayer, and then we'll turn it over to Brother Gary just here in a few minutes after Brother Tom reads. And, uh, and then we're, we're just looking for an exciting day. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we come to you today. We thank you and praise you, God, for another day you've given us. We thank you, Father, for... Just you meeting with us, God, and ask your Father that you would just uh, uh, bless in the service today. We pray, Father, that you would just uh, uh, use each one of us, God, in a, in a specific way, God, just to upbuild your kingdom here this morning. And Father, we just thank you and we praise you, God, for everything that you do. And we just ask you, Lord, for your leadership, for your guidance, and uh, help us, Lord, just to magnify the Lord Jesus Christ here today. And Father, we'll praise you and thank you for it in Christ's name. <coughs> Amen. Amen. Brother Tom. Pastor will speak from the book of Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, out of every nation, under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? Ushers, come forward, please.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we bring these gifts for the ongoing of the work, thy work in this community. Guide us so that we use the monies wisely. Amen. Amen. Wednesday at noon, and guess what? They will have food. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Um, and the guest speaker is Wanda King. She's a former missionary to Brazil. She's a former editor at Lifeway, pastor's wife. So you do not want to miss that this Wednesday at noon. Also, how many of you have children or that are students here at this church? How many of you are parents of a teenager that, uh, just raise your hand. All right. Good. I need every one of you here Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for the parents' meeting. It's a very important parents' meeting. We've got a lot of things to be discussing. So uh, everyone that raised their hand, they need to be at 7 o'clock after the worship service, after the prayer meeting this Wednesday night. Okay? That's easy to do. Let's stand. We're going to praise you. Are we ready, Mark? As I journey through. In the name of the Lord.
Amen for that promise. Standing on the promises. different please have a seat we got a new song we'll teach you all about you listen to the choir do it first great song because it says Christ Jesus he's our living hope
one of the many joys when we get to heaven is to be able to lay down the crowns that we have earned in this life at his feet. But sometimes there's an old hymn and the old Baptist hymn that says, what would happen if we got to heaven but had nothing to lay at his feet? Just think of this. Must I go and empty hand and thus my dear redeemer me? Not one day of service give him lay no trophy at him. Must I end? 
Amen. Thank the Lord this morning. Well, there wasn't nothing wrong with that, was there? <laughs> Amen. Thank and praise the Lord this morning for that uh, that beautiful song. And uh, it's certainly just good to be here this morning. And uh, did you come expecting God to do something today? You know, I think a lot of times we come to the house of the Lord and... Uh, and we just, uh, we're just not prepared. Uh, we're not ready. We're not ready for God to do uh, something out of the ordinary. And usually when God does something, by the way, it is out of the ordinary. Uh, it's beyond our means. It's beyond our control what God does whenever He comes together and meets with his people. This passage that uh, Brother Tom read this morning was a very special day. It was a very special time. Pentecost started, would be 50 days after the celebration of Easter, and the Lord Jesus Christ told them to be there. And it wasn't just an ordinary group of people, but they were people that had come together for a specific reason because God told them to be right there the day of Pentecost. We find the celebration of Pentecost, uh, which was mentioned in the Old Testament, was mentioned as Feast of Weeks or the Feast of the Harvest. But here in this passage here in Acts chapter 2, the day is known to many as the birth of of the New Testament church, the day of Pentecost. What a fabulous day. What a fabulous birthday that, they, that we've come to celebrate this morning, the day of Pentecost. Do you know that we, as, as a, a group of believers this morning, we need another move of God in our midst like it was there. Now, we can't repeat that day, but we can do things this morning that resemble the day of Pentecost. We can do that. We find here in this, in this passage, and uh, we never read it all this morning, but the first eight verses that we looked at shows how that these people, that they were united together united together. You know, I believe this morning that they, it's showing us that we need to be united together as well. If we're going to even resemble the day of Pentecost, we have to be united together. We can't be in our own little, what we sometimes say, our own little cliques. So we don't have them. Yeah, we, yeah, we do. We, we, they all have them. Well, everybody has their own little little clique. But these people were all together. They were united together. Boy, it, it would be good if the if the New Testament church in the day that we live in was like the birth of the church in the early days. Wouldn't that be wouldn't that be marvelous if we would just come together united like they were that day? Oh, we can. We, we certainly can. There's, there's no reason why that, that we can because that was the birth of the New Testament church and that was when, that when God sent the Holy Ghost to live and abide upon every born-again believer that day. I want to tell you this morning, if, if you're a born-again child of God, the Holy Ghost of God lives inside of you. Amen. And He wants us to resemble the New Testament church on that birthday, the day of Pentecost. He wants us to be united together. We need God to show up again like He showed up that day on the day of Pentecost. And I want to share with you just some things this morning. And am I a little too loud up there? Am I all right in here? 
Some people think I'm yelling sometimes, and I don't mean to. But I want people on the television to hear me, okay? All right, thank you, Brother Jim. But we find here that these people, that they were united together, first of all, and I believe that it's probably the most important thing, they were united together in prayer. In prayer. You know, we don't, we, don't, uh, we don't really talk about that much, uniting together in prayer anymore. But I, I want to tell you, any time that God ever done anything much in the Bible, people were in prayer when God met them. When God showed up on the scene, these, these people here, they were in, united together in prayer. They prayed together. They prayed for one another. You know, I've said that many times. And I, you don't think that I'm telling the truth. I want to tell you this morning, it matters, it matters when we pray for one another. God wants us to pray for one another. God wants us to unite together in prayer. That's why, the way they were assembled together that day on the day of Pentecost. Nothing builds unity in the church in the church like prayer does. It begins with prayer. It begins with prayer, and, and it began with prayer with these assembled together. You know, they were there for a pretty good while together. And the Bible said they had all things common. Wow. You know, we may not, as I've said many times before, we may not agree on everything, but we can have things in common, right? Right? And that's the way they were there on the day of Pentecost. They were united together in prayer. You know why? Because God wanted them to be that way. That's what God expected of them. And I want to tell you this morning, church, that's what God expects of us. He wants us to be united together in prayer. I think a prayer is a powerful force, don't you? I think prayer, do you believe in prayer this morning? Do you believe that God can still answer prayers in 2019? Do you think that God still wants us to unite together as a church and as a whole in prayer? That's what they were doing in the beginning, in the birth of the church. And I want to tell you this morning, that's what God expects of us this morning. He wants us to, un to unite together in prayer. You know, he says in Galatians 6, 2, Paul says, to bear you one another burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I mean, you can't do that without praying for one another. You just can't do that. This here, we, we find that there was a, a band of people that were gathered together to hear from God, to hear what God would do next, to see what God would do next among them. Let me ask you this morning, what do, you, what do you think the mind of Christ is? What, what do you think the, the mind of, of Christ is? Two words. You and others. Did you know that the, the mind of Christ, he's, he thinks about you all the time? Did you know the, the Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for you, he thinks of you and others? That's pretty good, isn't it? Aren't you glad that, that God thinks about us? Aren't you glad that, that the Lord Jesus Christ, that's seated at the right hand of God, thinks of you? I want to tell you this morning, God expects of us to pray in unity. To pray in unity. They were united in prayer. <laughs> Not only that, but they were united for a purpose. They were united for a purpose. They waited on the Lord together. Together. You know, I, I can't seem to think that they all had a an idea or an opinion about things. I, I can't imagine some of the conversations that were taking place 
when they were united together for a purpose. I can't imagine them being as quiet as we are this morning. Can you? I mean, honestly? I, I mean, I, I want to say this morning, I believe that there was excitement in the air when they were united together for a purpose. What's God going to do? When's it going to come? When's the promise going to come? I mean, they were, I believe they were excited, Brother Willie. I believe they're excited about what God was going to do next. They were united together in purpose. The Bible says in Philippians 1.27 that we're to to strive together. That word strive means that we're to work together. To work together. You know, snowflakes are a fragile thing until they start sticking together. When they start sticking together, they can, move, they can stop traffic. They can. I want to tell you this morning, when we start coming together and we start sticking together like snowflakes, we'll start stopping traffic. We will. We will. They were united together in purpose. They were working together. They were a team. I want to, I, I want to tell you this morning, church, we're a team. You didn't hear me, did you? We're a team. You know, when we... I don't, I don't watch football. Uh, I like uh, college football, but I probably won't watch the game tonight. I don't care much for NFL football, but that's an, uh, another thing in, it, in its entirety. But anyway, but whenever they get in the huddle, whenever they get in the huddle, all the, all the guys in the huddle, when they get in the huddle, they're not saying this is what the next play that we need to, to make. There's one guy, and it's normally the quarterback, that makes the next call. They, they, when they come together, they're not, they don't come together and say, well, this is what we need to do. We just need to do this and do that. And can you imagine what the play would look like? You know what, though? But they come together as a team. They come together as, as one to make the next play to win the game. I want to tell you this. If we come together as a team... We will win the game. we we'll win. There's no way that we can lose. There's no way that we can lose. We're, I like that song, we're a winner either way. We're a winner. But we need to stick together as a team. We are to work together for the glory of God. As I said, we, we have different ideas we have different opinions, but I believe that we're, that we're all looking at the same goal, right? We're, we're all looking at the same finish line. We all want the same results, right? Right? We want to glorify the Lord, don't we? We want to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ and to lift Him up in this place. That's what they were doing. They were united in prayer. They were united in purpose. They were united in power. Not just some of them. That's not what my Bible says. The Bible says in verse 4, I want you to look at it this morning, because we need to get this, okay? Somewhat more spiritual than others, okay? No one had, a, as what we might say, had arrived yet, Okay? Here's what he says in verse 4. And they were all filled. Did you see that? Well, now what does that word all mean? That means everybody that was there, right? And what does the word filled mean? What does it mean, church? They were all filled. They were full, wasn't they? Yes. They were all filled. The Bible says with what? It's all right to say it. The Holy Ghost. Some people's afraid to say that word, especially in a Baptist church. I want to tell you this morning, it's the Holy Ghost of God that's what saved you. 
It's the Holy Ghost of God that what lives inside of you. It's the Holy Ghost of God that's what's going to take you to heaven when you die. It's the Spirit of God. And he says they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues or other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. They were united in power. Not their power. But it was the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what it was. The power of the Holy Ghost. They were all filled, he says, with the Holy Ghost. Can you imagine what it would be if we were filled with the Holy Ghost? Can you imagine what God could do to a a group of people just like at First Baptist if we were all filled, not partially filled, but filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll tell you what would happen. We'd stop traffic. That's what would happen. We'd stop traffic. People would be a wondering. People would be coming in the door saying, what in the world's going on there? Do you want that to happen? I don't want the ordinary. I want the extraordinary. And the extraordinary is when God shows up. They were united in power. Not only that, but I see in verse 4. They were united in performance. In performance. The Bible says, And they were all filled and began to speak. Everybody was busy doing their part. There's not no big eyes and little U's. Do you know that in, the, in God's family? Did you know that every single person in this building this morning is important to God? Every single one of us are important to God. God, he, God never saved anyone to see it. He didn't do that. He saved everybody to serve. He saved every person to serve. A faith that won't work, I want to tell you this morning, church, isn't real. A faith that won't work is not real. You need to remember that. You say, where are you bringing that from? I'm glad that you ask, and I'll share it with you. That's what the Bible says in James 2.18. Nobody, people that do not work. He says, faith that will not work is vain. It's vain. No task is unimportant or too small with God. God, he, he wants us to work together. He wants us to be united in performance this morning, church. That's what God wants of us. It's a vital source of the New Testament church. It's vital to the work of the Lord that we work together. Do, do you think we need another Pentecost? Do you think that we need to experience what they experienced that day? Do you, still, do you think that this morning, church, that we, that we as a New, New Testament church, you need to be united in prayer? Do you think that we need to be united in purpose? Do you think that we need to be united in power? Do you think that we need to be united in performance? I want to answer that for you this morning. We do. We need that. We need God to show up again like he did that day. And the only way that he's going to do that, one word, united. We have to be united. We have to come together for a common goal. Listen, I've got my ideas, and you've got your ideas. And yours may be better than mine. But we have the same goal. Our goal is here is to uplift the Lord Jesus Christ and to see people come to the throne room of grace and find grace to help in time of need. That's our, that's our goal this morning. That's what we want God to do as born-again believers. I read something the other day I want to share with you. In a peanut cartoons commercial... 
Lucy was demanded that Linus change TV channels, threaten him with her, with her, with her fists if he didn't. What makes you think that you can walk right in here and take over? Asked Linus. These five fingers, says Lucy. Individually, they're nothing, but when I curl them together like this, in a single unit, they form a weapon that is terrible to behold. Which channel do you want to watch? Says Linus. And Linus looks at his fingers and he says, Why can't you guys get together like that? You know what? I wonder if God looks at us like that some of the times. And says, why can't you guys get together? Why, why can't you get together for the, for the goal? Why can't we reach the goal? Because a lot of times we cannot find ourselves together. Pentecost was a very special day. It was a, a very special time. We can't experience Pentecost like they did, Brother Henry, back 2,000 years ago. But we can experience some of the things that they experienced. We can experience unity among ourselves. And whenever we experience unity among ourselves, God will show up and he'll do great things. He will. You know why? Because when he shows up, he's the one in charge and not us. God's in charge of this thing. He just uses us as vessels to carry on his work, to see the body of Christ lifted up, to see the name of Jesus magnified and glorified. Jesus said, signifying the way that he would die, he said, but he said if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Thanks be unto God that Jesus Christ was lifted up for you and me. That we could have eternal life one day. And maybe you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and to save you. Maybe you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord and Master of your life. I want to tell you this morning, He wants you to do that. He wants to be Lord of your life. He wants to be Master. He wants to be the one in control of your life. And the only way that that'll ever happen is if you was to let him do that. God's not an intruder. He's not going to force his way into your life. But God is a gentleman. He stands at your door. And he asks, won't you let me in? God wants to come into your life and make a new person out of you. Do you believe that today? Amen. I want to tell you this morning, there's witnesses in here this morning that can, that can say this morning... I let Jesus in and he made a difference in my life. And he makes a difference in every person's life that he comes into. We're not sitting anymore, are we? We're standing. Standing on the promises of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want Brother Gary to come to the piano this morning and play that one little thing there that makes us stand, Gary. All right, let's stand together this morning. Maybe you're here this morning and... God has spoken to your heart today. And you realize that you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. Maybe you've known it for a long time and you've just not responded. I want to tell you, please don't put, put it off. Don't continue to put, put off the Lord. One day it'll be too late. One day it will be too late to cry out to God. But it's not today. He says, today if you hear my voice, he said, harden not your heart. God wants to save you today. He wants to come into your life and make a new person out of you. And He will. He certainly will. While we sing together this morning, if you need to come and pray this morning, whatever the need is, these altars are always open. Why don't you come right now as we sing? Calling you home. Call Why from the sunshine of love will you roll farther and farther away? Calling to day, calling to day, Jesus. 
calling the weary to rest, calling today, calling today. Bring him your burden and you shall be blessed. He will not turn you away. Call this morning. You don't want to miss the service tonight. I don't know what time that Super Bowl thing's supposed to come on tonight, but uh, we're not here very long on Sunday evening and try to come back. We've got a, a special preacher. He's in our midst this morning. I'm not going to tell you who it is. He's going to be a preaching tonight, sharing his testimony, giving the Word of God, and uh, try to come back this evening at uh, 6 o'clock. We had about 70 in here last Sunday morning, or last Sunday evening, 70, 75, and uh, we're just wanting you to come back now, all right? Uh, those that come last Sunday, please try to be here tonight, and if you weren't here last Sunday, if you don't break a leg or break an arm or something like that, you're not in the hospital, uh, try to come back this, this evening at 6 o'clock, and God will bless you. We just had a wonderful time last Sunday evening, uh, had a few nasal drips and uh, other people talking and uh, uh, giving testimonies in the in the audience, and I tell you what, we had church here last Sunday evening, and uh, so if you if you if you thought this morning was good, I, you're expecting it, you ought to come back this evening. It's Sunday evening is just a special time, isn't it, Brother Gary? That's right. You got something to announcement? No, him. He wasn't here. Okay. I just uh, I just like to say a few words. Um, uh, I'm not much on a public speaker or nothing, but uh, we all need to try to keep God in the center of our lives. And God's always in control. Uh, I know we've all been following the, all, most of us in here, some of us involved in sports. I've been in sports over 30 years. I've officiated basketball for over 30 years. I've tried to keep God in the center of that. Of course, it's hard sometimes to officiate and keep God in control. <laughs> uh, but everybody's been following the Tennessee men's basketball team. They're number one in the country right now. And uh, uh, they had a good saying to hear uh, a while back. The head coach, uh, Rick Barnes, is the head coach of the team. And during Thanksgiving, uh, he, he was asked, uh, what was the number one thing you did with your team over the holidays? He said, I went to Severe Heights Baptist Church, and I watched two of my players get baptized. And they also got a special about keeping God in the center of their lives. Yes. And they don't have a four or five star uh, player on their team, and they don't have a McDonald's All American on their team. And through my 30 years officiating, I've seen fights in the stands, I've seen, and, and I've seen players get fights. I've thrown people out. I've done it all, but through all of it, you know, I've seen pl people players fights, and I've also seen people pray on the floor and get saved. You know, and, and you just have to keep keep. Uh, People, you have to keep God in the center of it all. And we've got, a, uh, we've got somebody that's on the York basketball team here, Roger Meadows. If you've ever seen him play, he does an excellent job. He's a good athlete. I've watched him since he's about that high. You need to go watch him play. He does a good job. So, well, no matter what we do or what we're involved in, and what it is, we all need to keep, try to keep God in the center of our lives because it's hard sometimes, <laughs> no matter what we do. I just felt like I need to say that. So. Amen. Yes, uh, this coming Wednesday night, uh, we're going to be starting our new uh, uh, evangelism uh, course. Uh, it's the way of the Master, and it'll start this coming Wednesday night at uh, six o'clock. And uh, if you if you've had if you ever had trouble witnessing to people and talking to people about the Lord, if you'll come and go through this course with us, it'll give you more boldness. It'll give you the tools to witness to people. And to go out on the street and see people that, you've, that you'd be scared to death to talk to, God will give you the boldness to speak to them and tell them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Because that's what we're supposed to be doing anyway. But this helps us. Uh, Ray Comfort, 
and Kirk Cameron. Uh, they've got this ministry, Way of the Master, and it's, it's a phenomenal uh, evangelism tool, and you won't want to miss that. starts this Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. Anything else, Brother Gary, that... It's good, ain't it? All right, all right. Brother, Brother Gerald Huddleston, would you dismiss this brother in a word of prayer?